Okay, Dr. Jason W. Morrison, Theologist, New South Wales, Australia, continuing with the JW broadcast for May 2019, our baffle section, and I've got to run this tape for you now. We'll just see what... We're going to go a little bit deeper into it this time. What's happened here? Jehovah, by making themselves available for the special privilege of Bethel service. Have you considered this as a goal? Now, this is their Bethel service propaganda scheme, uh, recruitment. They want recruits, obviously. They're reaching out to the people in their organization and will run this tape. Making yourself available for Bethel service is like knocking on a door that leads to many other privileges of service. Of course, to serve at Bethel requires a self-sacrificing spirit and a willingness to serve wherever there is a need in harmony with the attitude displayed by the prophet Isaiah at Isaiah 6.8. Now, I just want to say to you, and I want to make this very clear, we're not playing games here with this organization. This is a multi-billion dollar conglomerate organization. And they pay these people at Bethel pittance. Now, I know Christian organizations that pay their people um, a salary in which they can live and provide for their family and be able to get somewhere in life. This organization, I'm going to repeat, is a multi-billion dollar conglomerate corporation and they're sending people to this Bethel to serve on pittance on the minimum um, salary that you could ask for. Now I've shared some videos of on this up until this point but we're going to see where this leads but don't kid yourself this is a multi-billion dollar conglomerate organization then i heard the voice of jehovah saying whom shall i send and who will go for us and i said here i am send me when isaiah learned about an opportunity to do more in jehovah's service he responded eagerly even though he did not know exactly what he was going to be assigned to do. It was enough for him to know that Jehovah was extending an invitation to serve in a special way, and Isaiah wanted to volunteer. Now, I just want to say to you, and I want to say this very clearly, they're using a religious illustration, a Judaistic biblical illustration, where the Isaiah the prophet was called specifically and exclusively at that time by God personally. They're using that illustration to parallel with their recruitment program for Bethel. And I want you to be very mindful that this is not a joke. This is a life decision. You will not be getting any rewards from Jehovah or anything like that. You should be getting paid a proper and decent salary to go and work in this organization like anybody else would in a Christian organization. This is not a Christian organization. It's a, um, what's it called? Non-conformist religion, religious cult. A non-conformist Christian religious cult. They say they're Christian, but they're not. They don't even know who the Lord Jesus Christ is. You want to be very, very careful before you are influenced into joining this life dedication to Bethel. The same spirit is shown by Bethel family members worldwide. What especially motivates so many to serve? Now, I just want to say that girl, they're handpicking the people that they're putting in this presentation. You won't see any fat people or disfigured people or anything like that. You're going to see hand-picked people that look immaculate in their presentation and, and emotional state. But this, viewers, is not the case when you get behind the scenes and find out about this place. It's not. Bethel. Love for Jehovah moves us to put... Now, they've got, they've got the ASL deaf people... Um, sign language thing going on and I'm an advocate of ASL um, videos I do ask you right now and I'm going to pause seeing as they want to bring the deaf people into it I do ask you to subscribe please 
to TAT ASL. That's the sign language um, channel for the ex Jehovah Witness community. This lady is brilliant. I got express permission for myself to be able to use their videos to help the deaf people to awaken to the Jehovah Witness organization. Now I'm referring deaf people. I haven't got sign language. I'm so sorry. I haven't got sign language, but go, go, go. That's my effort. Go, go, go to this channel and subscribe. Subscribe to this channel. Subscribe. Okay, this is the TAT ASL channel. I'll just give you a demonstration quickly. Look. They want to play with the deaf people. How dare they? How dare they think that they can manipulate these people? And I'm going to leave that there for you, but we will go back and just let me sort out my thing. Oh gosh, I'm a bit of a terror when it comes to this. I do again ask deaf people to join TAT ASL, TAT ASL. Back to the presentation, which has gone south. Where is it? Oh dear. What have I done, viewers? Let me pull. Okay, let's continue on. Interest ahead of self-interest, as stated in the Proclaimer's book, page 295. This is not work in which they gain personal prominence or material possessions. Their desire is to honor Jehovah, and they are satisfied with the provisions made for them in the way of food, lodging, and a modest allowance for personal expenses. Now, they claim it's a modern allowance for personal expenses. If you've watched the um, presentations 1, 2, and 3, you will find that is not the case. Um, and what they're asking you to do is not seek to have a life of your own. Now, that is not Christian at all. Um, you might think it's honourable and it's going to get you all these points for doing what you think Jehovah is going to be happy with or not be sad with you because of. But this is a multi, again, I'm going to say it again, a multi-billion dollar conglomerate organization that is leeching on the volunteer work to keep their cult propaganda going. And they, they just will not relent, this organization. They will not relent. Are there any rewards that come from serving in this unique way? Those who have offered themselves willingly for Bethel service have truly been blessed. I say to you too, if you're clever, if you've got a bit of wit about yourself, they're using um, foreign people to try and reach these nationalities, to encourage them to come in, because the Americans are pretty well over it. They're starting to reach out into the European countries and countries outside the Western world to find recruits. Born before, but there are many experienced brothers and sisters who can help professionally as well as personally. Where there's the consideration of the daily. Again, C viewers, there's not been one English person so far. Look, they're using these people's language to touch those that are going to be watching and listening to this. Text or watched our study with the Bethel family. Listening to the practical, valuable comments of our brothers and sisters is really refreshing. You really feel that they love Jehovah and their comments help you to feel the same. Might I just say, um, viewers, the poor old Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, they haven't got a mention. 
they have not got a mention. Don't you think that's something to be con concerned about? Here in Bethel, you have the best employer that there is, Jehovah. No other employer is as grateful and considerate as he is. So out of... Again, come on. This is like something out of a Barbie doll shop. They've handpicked these people, right, to influence recruits. But it's this is not how it is. I'm telling you, it's not how it love is. love for Jehovah, you're simply happy to give him your best. Whenever I think about what is being done... Now they're going for the South Americans and the Mexicans and all that. You've got to be a wake-up to this. You've got to be a wake-up to the the ex extraordinary ability of this company to drag people in. At Bethel, publications are being produced and shipped. Videos for our conventions are being made. And there is translation being done into so many different languages. I keep getting goosebumps. Yeah, you do get goosebumps when you realise that it's all, it's all wrong teaching and everything. You start getting goosebumps, all right? You start getting hot heart palpitations. No matter what I can do here. Again, now they're going for the blue collar. Look, the classic blue collar example. Be very careful, you've been warned. Knowing that by doing it, I'm supporting Christ's brothers makes me feel very, very good. Now, that guy actually mentioned, the well, Christ, he said Christ, but at least the poor old Lord Jesus Christ got a mention. So, how does a young person qualify for Bethel service? My parents raised me to have a, a, a spiritual focus, so in the school holidays... Now, viewers, I just want to say this, listen, you can have a spirit, spiritual focus. We're all spiritual, every one of us is spiritual. But you can be completely and utterly deceived. These people are completely and utterly deceived. They're walking around trying to convince people that our Lord Jesus Christ, or the Lord Jesus Christ, is Michael the Archangel. Now that's trying to convince somebody that Michael Jackson was Elvis Presley, or such and such and so and so. You can't... Oh my gosh, look, honestly, be... Let's go. Let's keep going, but it's 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 just mind bending. So as growing up, um, our life revolved around the ministry, doing spiritual activities, uh, and it really helped us keep uh, focused spiritually as a, as a family, and uh, helped me stay focused on the the goals that we wanted to achieve. I really. Well, what were the goals this guy wanted to achieve? They would have been programmed into his head. Enjoy reading. And one day, my dad just said to me, why don't you read the Bible? I know it sounds obvious. But one day, my dad just said, they would have been jamming the Bible down this kid's throat from day dot. But at that point, I'd never read it from, from Genesis to, to Revelation. So when I finished reading the Bible, it really changed my, my thinking and uh, my, it really proved the truth uh, to myself. Now, hang on a sec. The truth about what? the Watchtown Bible Track Society's truth, which which is just a made up truth, it's a decept it's a theologically abusive truth, or the actual truth. I don't think it's the actual truth because he's gonna be in the Jehovah Witness organization. See, let me just And this helped me to to keep a, a spiritual the Jehovah Witness organization and the poor people in it, they're undermined before they start because they're got no theological ethics because if they did have they'd change the mistakes they've known they've made and say sorry and just get on with it but they won't because they haven't got theological ethics they haven't got Christian ethics now this guy is saying he's got the truth and how spiritual he is but he's about as deceived as you're going to get he's ethically incorrect. he's putting all the work into it but he's theologically incorrect and this is the danger. The Jehovah Witnesses are arming these people with their lies and deceit and training them to go out and lie and deceive to others. And now they're going one step further. They're going, look, come in here and give us your service and we'll just use you up. Focus. And it really was the, the first step in, in reaching out and uh, achieving the, the spiritual goals that I wanted to achieve. In the congregation, I was able to help out with uh, doing the magazines and the sound and the platform. 
And doing these, uh, these privileges it really um, helped me to, to build a good uh, work ethic and you know, give, give them ways that I could give more to Jehovah. So the elders uh, used to... What more do you think Jehovah wants from us? It's all upside down. He did it all for us, not us for him. Oh, it's extending the work and it's bringing people in and all this and that. Well, what's the point of it if it's a whole bunch of lies? To work with me a lot on the ministry. So when I'd get to a feeling like, uh, oh, I, won't, I, can't, I can't do this, or this is too much, or it's too overwhelming, or I, or I don't believe this anymore, they send another poor deceived bugger in to, to keep them, in, you know, undermined and deceived. That may as well be Eve, and that may as well be Satan. That's the mentality of this organisation. Oh, really, I don't believe anymore, so they send somebody in to keep his deception fortified. I'd never be able to uh, reach this goal. An elder showed me a scripture, the Bible, where Jehovah was encouraging Joshua to be courageous, and that really impacted... Yeah, but the thing was, Joshua had, had the actual, you know, the reality of the fact. These guys have got a corruption of the facts. It did me that I was able to be courageous too, to reach my goal of Bethel. So he's going to be courageous enough to sell his soul out. He's going to sell his soul out to Bethel. That may as well, this bloke with the glasses, may as well be the devil himself. And he's no better because he's plonked his head, his life on this propaganda video. Oh. So when I visited Bethel, I saw that they were normal people and they had so many uh, good qualities uh, that I want. Now, I'm going to say this and I don't know if I should or not, but I will. Hitler was a normal person if you sat next to him. If you were on the right side of Hitler, he was a normal person. But what was going on underneath? Not many people realise Elvis Presley was a complete and utter pedophile. Oh, how do you know that? Well, he married Priscilla when she was 14. Hello? Think. Think. These people are normal, sure. But they're all organised in a, in a um, cult organisation. I wanted to, to imitate. Uh, very hospitable, very warm, very in, inviting. Now, he said he wanted to, if you don't imitate this organisation and its beliefs, you're going to get kicked out. You're going to get kicked out, so you've got that no choice. To, to want to uh, reach my goal so I could be like that. To serve at Bethel, there are qualifications that need to be met. You should have a deep love for Jehovah and the organization. Which well, you may as well have. If you're going to throw your, your soul to the, you know, the Watchtower Bible and track multi-billion dollar conglomerate organization, you better have a love for it. You better. But it's not, see, there's no mention of the Lord Jesus Christ here at all. Which is demonstrated by living in harmony with Bible standards. You must have... Now, where it says Bible standards, it's saying Watchtower Beliefs. If you can't swallow the Watchtower Beliefs and all its false prophecies and deceptions and stuff, then don't come sniffing around here, in other words. have a fine reputation as a spiritual person. You can be a spiritual person and completely deceived. You should have respect for Jehovah's moral standards, avoiding uncleanness and sexual immorality. You should have a clean conscience before Jehovah and be at peace with yourself and with Jehovah's organization. No mention of the Lord Jesus Christ. Your dress and grooming should be exemplary, befitting a Christian minister even during leisure time. Styles that are faddish or extreme or that identify us with undesirable elements of the world are not acceptable at Bethel. Now, don't you find that to be completely and utterly... It's an occult. That's a cult comment. If you have the freedom and liberty to dress however you want like the world does, then you're not coming here. If that isn't... Oh my gosh, if that isn't control, then what is? But these are their standards. If you want to go there, you've got to live by it. I had, 
We had a video earlier today where the guy said, man, you get up at breakfast time, you're walking around in a suit until we go back to bed. Man, I love walking around in my footy shorts and my T-shirt and paddling out in the, in the rivers and the creeks. Oh, gosh, think twice before you sign up for this. The applicant would not read, listen to, or view any type of material that is inappropriate for a Christian. Okay, so in other words, you've got to keep yourself ignorant. In other words, you're just going to be ignorant. Now, oh, good luck for that. What you just don't realise is the Watchtower trains people as lawyers and all this other stuff, but they're not going to tell you that. They're just not going to tell the normal congregationalists that. Such unwholesome material certainly would include pornography, debasing music, or any kind of entertainment that features sexual immorality, spiritism, or violence. What's the problem with... Everything seems to be sexually related here. I'll tell you, I, I can't go into it now, but they're having terrible sexual problems in the organisation because they're trying to keep God's standards. And what they don't realise is when you make up these rules for righteousness and all this other stuff because you're thinking you make Jehovah happy or stop him from being sad, you're actually encouraging sin. Bethel applicants should be from 19 to 35 years of age. Occasionally, there is an opening for someone over 35 years of age who may have specialized skills that are needed at Bethel, such as Specialized skills, open your ears. Those with certain technical or medical experience, translation skills, or building trades, such as plumbing, electrical, heavy equipment mechanic, or carpentry. Those with So there you go. You know, on the one hand, they're saying don't go to university, and then they're, on the other hand, they're saying applicant, applications or applicants with these skills will be given special provision after a certain age. If you're over 35 and you've got any of these, you know, university grade skills or construction skills, you've got to pass to get in. What about the poor old ignorant people that are taught not to do that and they get to 35 and they say, decide they want to go and they're just ignorant because they've been told not to learn. They're, you've got nothing. But such capabilities and training are welcome to apply. In view of the unique demands of a full-time assignment at Bethel, you should be mentally and emotionally sound, physically strong, and able to work long hours. Now, they want, they're going to work the guts out of you, in other words, and they don't want to have any medical repercussions. Now, one of the undermining, defining factors of, behind this, and the reason why they're doing this, is because they teach their people about Armageddon and the world's going to end. And a lot of people don't worry about their health. These Jehovah Witnesses have got no clue about their health. And what they've found was a lot of them were going to Bethel and getting ill and it was costing them a fortune in medical bills. So they're saying, hey, if you're not fit and you're unwell, you're not going to be stepping foot in here because you're going to cost us money. And if you don't think you're going to be working long hours, you're not listening to the presentation, they're going to flog you. You should be able to read, write, and speak the primary language of the branch territory. This will enable you to communicate well with others serving at Bethel, to receive needed training, and to work safely in the Bethel environment. Bethel applicants agree to serve for a minimum of one year, during which time you will receive training for continued Bethel service. With regard to secular skills, we do not encourage individuals to obtain university education or training with the thought that this will improve their chances of being called into Bethel. The best way to prepare for Bethel... Now, you just heard that yourself. They do not encourage university or anything sort of educational training. Yet, just a minute ago, they said if you've got those... Um, unique qualities and skills you'll get a free like a, you'll get favored to get into the place after a certain age service is to first serve in the full-time pioneer ministry now these silly well i'm going to say it these guys have put themselves in front of a jehovah witness propaganda cart and i say that because they're sharing Theologically abusive material. Now, what's theologically abusive material? Theologic, 
Secondly, abusive material is material that tells lies and changes truths into suit what the organisation wants people to believe and taking it to the public and abusing them with it. In other words, trying to get them to believe it too. The greatest need is for single brothers. However, all who meet the qualifications, including sisters, are encouraged to apply for temporary volunteer service. Now, how are you going to go being an architect if you haven't been to university? How are you going to go doing that plumbing work back there if you haven't been trained? Service. Serving as a temporary volunteer at Bethel may open the way to other opportunities to expand your service to Jehovah. Oh, this is so contradictory. I'm going to um, I'll run it a little bit. If down. you are interested in applying for Bethel service, which application should you request from a member of your congregation service committee? Since there are two types of applications available, first, give careful and prayerful consideration to your circumstances. There do, do, actually do. If you want to get out and make a living for yourself, get to college, get to university, learn what you want to learn. Don't wait till you wake up to the organization. And build yourself a family and provide for your family. If you listen to this organization, they'll have you standing on the carts, sharing the propaganda material, and your life will pass you by and you'll be kicking yourself in the foot. So many Jehovah Witnesses commit suicide because they've been lied to and their life passes them by. After, decide whether you will request from the elders the application for volunteer program, A19, which is available for those interested in serving on a temporary basis for as brief as one week or as long as several consecutive months. Or you may decide to request the application to become a member of the Worldwide Order of Special Full-Time Servants of Jehovah's Witnesses, A8. Now, you need to watch the study that I've done before this. On I think this is number six. I think you need to not watch number five because it tells you all about this application form. It's as wicked as you can get. This application is for those interested in serving on a long-term basis for one full year or longer. If the branch committee determines that there is a need for your services... Now, how are you going to do all this if you're just an ignorant person that's been standing at a car? Can you see? Can you just see how twisted this organization is. They will decide where you can best be used, whether at Bethel or perhaps on a theocratic construction assignment. Submitting your application may open a door of opportunity to serve Jehovah and his organization in a variety of ways. It's like a sci-fi movie, isn't it? It's like a, a, it's just not real. Yeah, Dr. Jason Morrison, Theologist again. I just want to say thank you for watching the videos and I uh, hope you got plenty of uh, self-rediscovery and freedom out of it. If you watched it on YouTube, please share or like. Um, maybe even comment. If you watch it on Facebook, like, comment, share. Um, but most of all, get out and live. This isn't a rehearsal. You've got a one-off life. Don't let your loyalty and your faithfulness blind you to the life that you should be experiencing. Till the next video, thank you for watching and bye for now.